Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta to our weekly coffee chat, Catherine and me. How are you doing today, Catherine? I'm doing really, really well. I'm sitting here with my castor oil pack around my belly because I love multitasking and I love castor oil. And I, yeah, I think I, I went up and traveled and saw my daughter last week. And actually, she's coming home to see the animals, I think, more than us <laughs> this week. But I, I, I'm good. I'm really, really good. I'm feeling really up for it this week. Yeah, that's good. I've got my water. I've got my water. It's not a Stanley Cup, guys. I know there's a huge Stanley Cup crave. This is not a Stanley Cup, but I got my big water here. Um, I think Catherine and I have joked before about how much water we drink. We're probably <laughs> the most hydrated human beings on the planet right now. But, um, but, um, yeah. We have a really great topic. This was kind of your idea. And also I kind of had a little bit of an idea around it is and talking about people like giving up on their dreams. And so um, I'll let you kick it off, Catherine. What, what, what made you want to talk about this today? What's inspired having this conversation about people's dreams and their lives and their ambitions and their goals and giving up too quickly and, I, do you know, it's something that's really been in my awareness for quite a while now. And I think because a lot of my work is on various different platforms. So the YouTube, and we've spoken to death about the truth of community. Um, but um, when I'm, my main background is health and wellness, holistic health for humans and animals. And when, if you take platforms like Instagram, for example, what I'm seeing is we're living in a culture now where people say they want one thing so for example a lot of people are turning against big pharma and that way of managing disease rather than creating health and yet they still want an instant fix and even when we're looking at um turning around new habits whether it's whether you're in a financial dire straits and you're looking to get yourself out of that or relationships you know you're 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 attracting toxic relationships all the time in any areas of your life or your career's not on point on your health's not on point. It's this, what I'm realizing is so many of us haven't got enough desire or focus or have really thought about our why to really stick the course. So you and I work with people with home-based businesses as well with things like the ASEA. And it's amazing how many people give up at the first obstacle. And I'm not just talking about a certain generation, I'm talking about all ages here and it's really been making me think over the last few months about where is this lack of resilience come from where is this um i've got lots of ideas where it's come from which we can discuss but it makes me very sad because what we see time and time again it doesn't matter what mentor you follow whether it's in spirituality whether it's in business whether it's in manifestation whether it's in health the message is consistent most people give up on whatever their dream or goal is just before they're about to make that breakthrough and i find it heart-wrenching to see it happening so much at the moment i see it over and over and over and over again in my work um in ashtanga yoga and it's interesting because in the shower this morning um you know there's the I was thinking about this because I was telling you off camera, Catherine, there's this Sanskrit term. It's parampara or parampara, it said both ways. So parampara basically means that it is information given from a teacher to a student. And different from like an apprenticeship. It's kind of like an apprenticeship, but there's no 
term limit. And this is a very sacred way of teaching. And we see this in Ashtanga. We also see this in other, you know, you think about music teachers. A lot of people actually are doing param param with their piano teacher where they're sitting with one teacher at the piano for years learning an instrument from this person. And it's not just the academic learning. It's actually the hands-on adjustment. Like when people take piano, they get adjusted. And in Ashtanga, they get adjusted. And so the purpose of this, though, is that it's like building a snowball. You know, you're, you're the, yeah. you start and you're, you're slowly learning and integrating the information so that you one day can become the master. And I think what's happened, and I don't know if this is, I don't actually believe that this has been a problem for in some other timelines, but as of recently, it seems like people feel like they are the exception to the rule, that they can yeah. leapfrog over the beginning to get to the end. And, you know, one of my favorite human beings in the world, Marnie Alton, talks about in her classes a lot, talks about ballerinas. The prima ballerina is only the prima ballerina because she understands the beauty and the foundation. You know, if you can't have, if you have a beautiful chandelier, that chandelier means nothing if you don't have a great foundation of your house. Mm. And so I think what's happening in all aspects, aspects of our world around us is that we want to do something. We have a dream, we have an ambition, but we think the expectation of how we're going to get there isn't the reality. And so whenever there's resistance or pushback or it's not happening fast enough, we walk away and we're angry. Mm. And that's just not reality for anything. Anything in life is going to take time. And it's and it's and those obstacles that you face with anything are necessary obstacles to build your resistance, to build your strength, to build your wisdom around what you're doing, whatever that might be. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. And I think it's the pace of life now. I mean, we know there's so many reasons for this. We know that we're being poisoned from every possible source. We know we're being brainwashed and mind controlled. And it's so much easier now because most people have got some sort of media playing or watching all the time. So it's very hard. You know, you can't even go to a shop without records playing or songs playing or billboards flashing certain things up when you're driving along the motorway or, um, you know, electromagnetic pollution. We're being bombarded from all areas. But the thing is, I don't take that as an excuse. Lots of people say, yes, it is. And of course, we've all got different predisposed strengths and weaknesses, not just from genetics, but also from toxins, lifestyles that we've inherited and been bought into in our early years. So it's not that it's not valid and that it doesn't affect you. That's not what I'm saying. But there's plenty of people that have shown that you can override those influences. Some might need to work harder than others. So, for example, if you've been born in a very toxic environment and your mother's passed on lots of toxins to you, you've been brought up in a home that's moldy, all sorts of things like this, you're going to have perhaps some health challenges that you're going to have to work harder to achieve. But we know that we can do it all. But this quick fix mentality, just the very fact now that most people won't sit through a long form video and they want something 30 seconds and you're buggered if you do and buggered if you don't, because everyone only wants something short and quick and it's got to be quick. I mean, I can't even read half the stuff on Instagram or TikTok because my brain doesn't work. So, that. Yeah, yeah. But the youngsters do and people that are on that the whole time do. But equally, it's the fact that in one respect, people want that quick fix. But in the next respect, they'll come back and say, well, where are the scientific studies? Where's this? Where that? So there's this complete conflict. And what they've forgotten is that everyone will look at a bit of information or a lifestyle decision or a challenge through their personal lens. Therefore, whoever's giving the information Stop shooting the messenger. And I'm not just talking about myself here. I'm talking about in general, because what you need to give you proof will be completely different to what I'd need to give me proof. Yeah. So the owner should then be on you as the individual to go and if it's triggered something in you, a curiosity to go and find out what you need to know to convince yourself because no one else can do that for you. So go how that links into giving back on your dreams so much is 
we talk about all the things that we don't want in the world, but look at what the truth of community has done, Bryce, by saying when we all get Nasawa Jazahara and we get this money, when we get med beds, it's more feeding into the same thing, having to get to the end result, as you said, without having put in the steps. And I'm sorry, but there's never satisfaction in that approach. No, and I want to apologize, guys. It's very polony right now in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you see me obsessively blowing my nose, that's why. But yeah, absolutely. It's interesting because I'll give you guys like an example. So the type of yoga that I practice, you have to go to India. It takes at least 10 to 15, even sometimes 20 years to be granted the permission to teach. It's a big deal of, of being a student. I'm at the 18 year mark and I have, I do have the authorization, but as a student, I've been doing this for 18 years. Well, in, in Atlanta, Georgia right now, there's a couple of people who are going around trying to be Ashtanga teachers. They've never been to India. And I know that's why, because I know why, because from the outside looking in, an Ashtanga teacher is somebody who is extremely fit, can do really wicked things with their bodies because they've been practicing for a very long time. They're very knowledgeable in philosophy. They usually speak Sanskrit. They're usually kind of badass. They get up at two, three o'clock in the morning and they run these programs where they're flipping people. They usually are covered in tattoos. You know, they so there's this this kind of like this rock star um, image with the Mysore Ashtanga teacher. And I remember even before I was one, I perceived that as such seeing my teachers. But what people don't realize is that my sore teacher is exhausted. They're, they're working very hard for not a lot of money. There's a lot of sacrifice, but people want the image. And mm -hmm. what's happening in Atlanta is there's these people going around trying to teach these Ashtanga workshops without the education to actually teach a workshop. Mm. And it's, it's blowing up in their faces. So the, if you want to do this, you have to go and put the time in, in order to have be grounded, to not be stars in your eyes about the practice, but be very grounded in it so that you can teach it, you know, to be, to be grounded enough to not to allow, allow students to lionize you as well. And so that's just an example. And so they don't have their foundation. We see also with like social media, I mean, I was supposed to do a show with Shanti yesterday, we'll probably do it next week over the Yacht Girls, which are these Instagram models who appear to, they're in their 20s they appear to have like millions of dollars and living this fabulous life but what they have to do to get that money is atrocious mm. most people in their 20s don't have money most people in their 20s have to work from the ground up and you're right even with the truth or community i've laughed because i mean i would love for someone to come and give me a million dollar check but it's probably not going to happen and that's it's my responsibility and I laugh because they're all sitting around waiting for something to happen, for someone to come and protect them and save them and give them money, but yet they're against communism. Why can't, why aren't you good enough to get up off your butt and actually do it for yourself? Why can't you make it happen for yourself? And there's so much satisfaction in that. Yes. There's so much. Now, I do get if someone's got or a loved one's got a terminal illness, I completely yeah. get the desperation for the med beds. I completely 100% get that. I doubt whether there's a single person watching this that hasn't got some loved one, whether it's human or animal, doesn't matter, that they know would massively benefit from being allowed a complete new reset. So I please don't think I'm saying that there isn't a purpose for this. And we do know that people do have miraculous healings all the time. I mean, there's so many teachers out there that do that. Um, even some of the dubious ones in the old oh, that have been found to be abusers still have had miraculous healings happen under their yeah. care. Um, so, you know, this is it's a tricky one because our culture now is tricking people all the time. You know, I talk about manifestation a lot and I see it happen in my own life time and time again. And I see when I'm consistent with my practices, it happens. And when I'm not, it doesn't. And even though I know that, sometimes I'm not consistent with my practices and then it doesn't happen. So it's not the fact that we can't make things happen. It's the fact that when you give up on your dreams too early, the amount of people I talk to or work with, when you say, what do you really want? Right, okay, if I just asked you to write down now, the most important goal in your life in whatever area of that life that can be and for for you not for what someone else wants for you for what you want for yourself most people can't do it Bryce they can't do it because 
they haven't allowed themselves their levels of chronic stress are so high that they just haven't allowed themselves to dream big and therefore it's easier for people because this is the matrix of how we've been taught to live it's easier to make people settle for mediocrity settle for long-term medication settle for long-term debt settle for all the things they don't want because as soon as people, you know, the dark forces and the laws of the universe know really well that all you've got to do is really have clear focus, feel into the emotion as already it's always happened and not give up. And if we all did that, everything about our lives and therefore the planet we're living on would change. So when people are giving up too early, please realize this is part of the matrix. Yeah why anyone that's making you give up too early i trust me has not got your best interests at heart no and it's it's you know you can look at it in the spiritual world we call it the initiates path the initiates path is never easy but you can also say that with any business with any goal that it's not going to be easy there are going to be obstacles and i will say too even just looking at like even what i do for a living you know, you've got somebody who's been working the practice, working the practice, working the practice, and they're slowly improving. And then all of a sudden they have this week where everything's tight again, where mm -hmm. they feel stiff. And I know from experience that they're about to have a breakthrough. Yeah. But sometimes it's like that slingshot. Sometimes the rock has to be pulled back a little bit before it can be released forward. Mm -hmm. And what and how sad is that when someone gives up? when they're literally just about to be pushed forward it's it's um, such and that's analogy it is such good analogy do you think Bryce this is where having a really good mentor or coach or therapist or friend that you can have these conversations really come in someone Absolutely. that you know has got your best interest at heart that is and that goes back to the whole parampara or parampara say, say both ways because you are submitting to the teacher to the teachings of the master whatever that is whether that's in a spiritual capacity whether that's in music or science or whatever you are submitting now now don't be confused this is not a cult leader if the teacher is mm -hmm. trying to take over your life in every aspect that's not a master that's a cult leader this is somebody that's just going to help you and teach you and also the hard part is, guys, they're not here to coddle you. Mm. They are going to show you your blind spots. I was saying with our, Steve the other day on a show that that's the hardest part for me as a Mysore teacher, specifically with my students, is that when I see them having that doubt, instead of, because my nature is to go and put my arm like, it's okay, you want to go take a rest, it's okay. But I know that that's a necessary obstacle they're going through, and it is my job to hold the space and yeah. say, do it again. Mm. Do it again. Now with my education, I also am responsible when I know they're there, they really need a break. Then I know, okay, I need to lay off a little bit and we'll, we'll step back into this tomorrow. But that, that is that good mentor. That's going to say, keep going. You're yeah. struggling. Keep going. Even if it's just putting one foot in front of the other, even if it's just crawling for the day, keep going going because anything everything in life is going to have resistance there is not i love those graphs where people show like what i think success looks like point a to point b and it's a straight yeah. line what success really looks like and it's this and going back and and you know and that's and that's again that is true for every single industry i don't care if you're trying to be a yoga teacher or if you're trying to be a restaurant owner or if you're trying to be a scientist it doesn't matter that pattern is because we're humans that's going to exist in every single aspect of life you know and I, I and i remember right before i went to college my piano teacher actually my mother was talking about you know different options of what i was thinking about doing when i grew up you know and my mother had said something about, oh, but this business is really tough for people. My piano teacher looked at my mom and said, all businesses are tough. If mm -hmm. that's what she wants to do, let her do it. All mm -hmm. businesses are tough. Every, there's no guarantee. All businesses are, are tough. And um, we were saying too, Catherine, like, you know, when you go to university or college or a trade school, for example, the real learning actually doesn't start until you actually leave the school anyway, because then you're having to integrate. 
And so if you if you think about even if you even if we're talking to someone who's 40, 50, 60 years old that's still trying to achieve that goal and you have all this life experience, well, that goal still needs integration. Give it time to integrate. Yeah, completely. And the integration, we've spoken about this a lot, but it's a crucial stage that most people want to jump past. But the problem is, is, is there's so many studies to be done. You know, look at lottery winners. Most of them, the vast majority of them lose the money straight away and it ruins their life. Yeah. Because they haven't made the changes themselves. So they don't believe at a heart level, at a soul level, that they deserve the, that money. They don't believe that they're the type of person that can have that money. And therefore, it ends up doing the negative for them instead of the positive. So I think anyone, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, right, I've got this health challenge or this financial challenge or relationship challenge or, or I don't know what my what I want to do then allowing yourself time to really ask those questions and sit with it and try different things and see what lights your fire. Because a yeah. lot of the time people have had it so suppressed, they don't know when yeah. you ask them. So ask your friends, um, you know, what is it? When do you see me, my, my most vibrant? And it, the answers might surprise you. Yeah. Yeah, and I was about to say too, when you hit, you know, one thing I love about Ram Dass is I quote him all the time is that he would always talk about when you per per perceive an obstacle, look at it as interesting. Mm. You know, so how do you change your mindset when that when the hard times come because they're going to come for everyone. Yeah. If, you're, if you're trying to do a job and you hit an obstacle and you you want to quit, can you perceive can you change the way that you perceive this? Can you change the way that you see this instead of going, oh, my God, this sucks. I'm going to quit. This is awful. It's not fair. Life's not fair, blah, blah, blah. Go, oh, interesting. What can I learn from this? What is the opportunity being presented for me to gain more wisdom in this craft, whatever it is you're doing, that's going to make me a better master in the future because I've been given this opportunity to learn through this obstacle because that we learn through obstacles, right? That's why we all had to take multiplication time tests when we were kids, mm -hmm. right? We learn through the obstacles. We learn how to move through them and we gain more wisdom, not necessarily just about the obstacle, but about the craft we're working on. You know, in the initiate's path, you have so many things thrown at you, so many obstacles, and it's like the universe keeps, keeps saying, are you sure you want this? Are mm. you sure you want this? Okay, go through this fire now. Go through this now. Okay, now you've learned something even more that's going to make you more grounded in this craft and whatever it is that you're, when I say craft, guys, please don't twist that word. I mean like a trade, whatever. I'm not talking about occult stuff. I just realized we're probably going to get somebody saying that. I mean like a yeah. trade like a hairdresser or like whatever it is, whatever it is that you want to do, you know? And it's interesting. I was talking to my hairdresser down in Florida and I, and we were talking about it and I was like, I could never do your job because I would have a hard time working with so many people in one day. And if someone got angry at me, it would be really hard for me. And she was like, well, you learn how to handle that. Isn't that a good thing? A good example of what we're talking about. If you Absolutely. are a hairdresser, not, not, no, no snowball's chance in hell. Are you ever going to go your whole career without having a difficult client or two? Yeah. And how, and, and if you, when you have that difficult client, you learn how to handle it. You learn how to work with that. Amazing. It's an, yeah. it's interesting. It's an opportunity. It really is. So I, th I think, you know, my, my overriding message is if you've given up on something, that's a passion of yours, that's a dream on yours, of yours, or you're about to, find someone, find some accountability partner, either a friend, a family member, um, a therapist, a coach. A, a coach. Teacher. You know, there's so many out there. Find someone that you resonate and that you really trust has got your best interest. And that doesn't have to be paid for. You know, there's various different ways. Be creative if you, ha if you haven't got the money for pay for someone. And make sure they help you stay focused on your your goal, your dream, and don't give up because the breakthrough, as you said, just when you think it's got too difficult, that's nine times out of ten. That's just as you're about to have your break, greatest breakthrough. And I find it heart wrenching. You know, I see it all the time on the health side of things, where people have had conditions that they might have had for ten years plus. And they'll give something a go and they'll give up within a couple of months. And you're like, you're telling everything about your mind, body and soul that you're not worth it.
yeah you know it's, you, yeah. your body's been coping and keeping you going just about or your mind for all these years in the hope that you're going to keep looking and then you keep looking and you give up too easily you know that's not what life's about no animal in nature would ever survive if it had that attitude and no. so sometimes the convenient lifestyles that we live, we might moan about them a lot, but they're not in our best interest because you've got to go through those challenges to actually build that resilience. Well, and it's it's funny too with kids. Like if you look at a little kid who's trying mm. to learn a cartwheel, they don't give up. No, they'll bruise themselves. They'll um, you know, they'll scrape themselves, but then once they nail that cartwheel, they're gonna call you out and have you watch them do it like five because they're so proud of themselves, right? You know, I, I I saw a video the other day of a little kid. I guess he had just learned to ride a bike. He was really little and he fell off his bike and he stood up and he goes, Yes. And he got mm. and he got back on his bike. So like every time you hit that obstacle, can you not just go, Oh yes, this is a new opportunity for me to get even stronger? And one thing too. To, to consider off of what you were saying, you know, we say it a lot, the devil, sometimes the devil you, you know is better than the devil you don't know. And I find that a lot of people in my own work outside of YouTube are actually afraid of themselves. Yeah. They're afraid of how powerful they are. They're afraid of the breakthrough. They want the breakthrough, but they're also afraid of it. Absolutely. It's, so that obstacle becomes an excuse to not have to learn ever learn fully what they're capable of. Yeah. And so maybe for some people watching right now, that might be an aha moment. Is it mm. the obstacle you're afraid of or is it yourself? Are you afraid that if you actually conquer that obstacle, mm. you're going to prove something to yourself that you didn't know about yourself? That's so funny you raise that. It's so pertinent because I, Jay, April and I um, did a show last night on, it was our third one in our manifesting series and we were doing about lofty questions but also yeah. fear of success and also about how each chakra point is almost its own manifestation portal and moving up through those. But this is such a big thing, it's the fear of success because our self-identity is so deeply rooted in our financial statement, our, our fi family's financial status, our health status. You know, how many times do you hear, oh, it's hereditary? It's like, well, habits are hereditary, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, you know, science is categorically proven at the moment. I mean, it might well change, but less than one, far less than 1% of diseases are actually hereditary, but lifestyle choices are hereditary. You've only got to look at the difference in diets in different regions of the world to see that. Yeah. Um, so I think this fear of success success is if if this last few years of us all talking about these issues and master controllers and people who are doing this and that to us is how you know David Icke has said it love him or hate him he said it right from the word go all we've got to do is say no and not comply but the same goes for any challenge you're talking about you just got to get to that stage where you actually say no more i'm really excited to change and just open yourself up to what comes and if you it's much easier if you've got an accountability partner that just when you're wavering someone can say no don't keep going just like any good sports coach does absolutely and that I, that's that's crucial to have somebody that can be kind of your hold the space for you so that you can um can can fa face yourself truly face yourself uh, don't believe everything you think this mind we have, this is a, this is a no negotiator, you know, and it likes its patterns and it likes what it knows. And sometimes the mind knows the discomfort and the mind knows the suffering, but what in the mind's afraid of what it doesn't know. So it's going to negotiate yeah. you back to that place of suffering, whereas actually your spirit is much bigger than that. And, and so, and, and give yourself that time again. Sometimes that's why it takes wh a while for things to integrate because you're learning, you're getting to know yourself, your true self. And how amazing would it be instead of just waiting around for some white knight to come in and give us an Asara check or some white knight to come in and give us a med bed, how amazing would it be if we could do that for ourselves, if we were our own white knight? And that maybe is what you're afraid of. If it is what you're afraid of, journal about it. Talk to yeah. yourself about it. Interesting, right? Oh, I'm afraid of, I'm actually, this whole time I've been thinking I'm afraid of the controllers, but it's actually me I'm afraid of in my in my own greatness, you know? When you get given something from an outside source, that's a one-off event normally. And if it if it 
is too easy it's not going to change anything about you your behavior your habits but when you've done it yourself look at every successful business person you know when they've achieved themselves they're not worried about going bankrupt because they know if they've done it once they can do it again yeah and quicker normally the second time around because they've learned a lot more lessons so there's such a freedom in knowing that you know you can recreate and therefore whatever life throws at you you've got you know you're resilient enough to fa find a way around it and thrive and you hear people being interviewed the whole time about this about look at how many people who've had cancer that say actually if they survive it say that was the best thing that ever happened to me because i fundamentally have got a completely different outlook on life now people that have gone bankrupt people that have lost everything you know divorce separation um it's absolutely traumatic at the time yeah. but when you get through it you're a stronger person for it with a lot more resilience and have opened up a lot more opportunities for yourself. Yeah, that was, I've said it before when I broke my sacrum, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. I almost quit because yeah. I was in so much pain, but I didn't. I just, I just, uh, of course, corrected and changed it. And I found Marnie Alton's bar and now I'm stronger. Even when my boyfriend adjusts me at 41 years old, he's like, your body is feels so much better now than it did even before that because I made that decision that even though it hurt, even though it was painful, even though it was hard and I wanted to quit, I knew I had to keep going. And yeah. so I, and if I can do it, listen, you guys, if I can do it, anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. You know, that's why people who train from for marathons are so changed. You don't think so running a marathon's hard marathon's hard? Some of my friends who've done marathons are absolutely amazing. I mean, they are, you know, all ages, all level of fitnesses, all type of physiques. They haven't made an excuse. They've just gone for it and they've done it. And you are forever changed after you've done Never. that. <laughs> done one. Um, are you just a 5K ever, or a 10K? Yeah. Or, you know, you look at people like my dad used to laugh and say, nobody smiles when they're running. Because running is painful, like no, you know. But but you learn through that grit. You learn and you learn that resilience. You you are focused on the uncomfortableness, but yet that that amber of spark of life that says, "Just take one more step." Yeah, just stay. Just take one more step, and that's that's so life changing. So many runners I know, same thing. They that they've just deciding to do that, decide making that decision to come rain or shine, come yeah. sweat, come that they're just going to do it and they're going to, they're going to do it. And they're going to accomplish. It might take them seven hours to run that marathon, but you know what? Exactly. They ran it. They exactly. It. You know, Still more than me who's never yeah. even tried one. Um, and so I just think, you know, this shows the importance of having a goal. So I, I would encourage anyone who's watching this to really take some time this week to think i love bob proctor he, you can look up bob proctor on youtube he's got some amazing results but get yourself a piece of card write a goal down in the present tense not something you're going to do in the future and make sure it scares you make sure it makes your heart flutter make sure it makes you think oh god and but write it down yeah i still they have you do it they have you do it in this guys they have you write down your af affirmation that says you know let's just say something silly. Let's say you want to be in a really good relationship. I am in a really good, even though you might not be, I am in a really good, you're putting yourself there. So I agree with that. And I also want to ask our audience too, Catherine, if, if you don't mind, I think it'd be kind of cool if you guys want to share with us, like what are some goals, some things that yeah. you really want to do, but you're scared of? Will you share those with us? Will you? Cause I, I want to, I want to know, I want to get to know you guys better and then, um, or if you've, if you've accomplished something that no one thought you could accomplish, what were your challenges and what did you do to share some advice in the comment section or in the live, the premiere chat, share some advice of what you did to get yourself through that. Absolutely. 
Because I mean, I, even though I'm, I mean, uh, we're still living. As long as you're still living, we're still undergoing challenges, aren't we, Catherine? So I want to hear from you. Oh, guys. completely. Always will, and and look forward to them as well. And and go and look. It's not not normal plug, but go and have a look at the interview that I did yesterday. Lofty affirmations, lofty questions with Jay and April. I think it went up last night. Um, okay. I'll really good advice for reframing those affirmations. It's absolutely brilliant. It's been a game changer for me. Um, I know we've spoken about it off camera, Bryce, but, you know, these little tweaks, you know, when you find them, as you say, share in the comments what works for you because you're going to have things that have worked for you that we haven't even come across or thought of yet. So we'd love to know. Everyone would love to know. And I also want to know, you guys, before we sign off, and this might take some people being brave, Maybe we can even take some of your comments and do a future show, Catherine. But is there somebody watching right now? Are you afraid of yourself? And mm -hmm. will you be willing to put that in the comment section and then ask yourself why? And maybe answer that question so we can, if you want to. I don't know if anybody will do that. You don't have to. But I want to hear people's own, if you're realizing you're afraid of yourself and you ask yourself, why am I afraid of myself and give an honest answer why, I think that would help so many people. And you could say something or write something in the comment section that somebody else is going to read that's going to give them a light bulb moment. And, and if we all just help each other out and ask each other these hard questions, I think we could break through whatever it is collectively we need to break through. So I know. I, you I, don't, yeah, you don't have to, but if you're brave enough to, you can use a different name if you want to. I would love to see that because I know I've been afraid of myself in the in the in the past before and I'm probably coming up in the future as well. There'll be other obstacles and having to ask myself, why am I afraid of myself? Um, that's a hard question to ask yourself, but it's necessary and it'll lead to some insight. And so anything you guys are willing to share, please share it because you know, this is the point of these coffee chats, right? <laughs> it's just completely. completely. So. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed that today. It's given me lots of food for thought, lots of things to be working on. Me too, and I apologize for having a full on pollen attack while we were. Well, my has gone really bad because we've got the um, we've got horrendous storms today. If the rain carries on anymore, I'm going to have to build an ark. But all the it's gone all dark and everything, so my light keeps going all funny because it's like it's like uh, it's like it's just about nightfall's about to hit. It's really awful weather here. So well, anyone some, some of the rain nice, our way, so we can wash this pollen. Yeah, what's what? <laughs> Yeah. So for anybody right. else in the Southeast right now, if you're having an allergy attack, bless your heart. Because I, I've got all my tissue right here. But anyway, you guys, I will put all that all the links to Catherine's video she just did with Jay in the description box below. Next week we'll be over with Catherine. Give us your insights, guys. I cannot wait to go back and read what you guys have to say and also in the yeah. chat what you have to say because you're you have no that is one thing I have learned as a YouTuber that I have to remind myself I get emails all the time from people where they said you said this one thing and it sparked something in me and I had no idea so you just and I'm sure you've gotten the same thing Catherine you have no idea what you write in that comment section might change somebody else's life so yeah. please share that information you guys so all right. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us on this coffee chat. And we will be over with Catherine next week. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye.